What do you see as the most important issue in this election? Well, I think uh, because we're in, engaged in, uh, in fighting in two war-fighting theaters, Iraq and Afghanistan, and we have troops in combat, that that must be the priority for the American people. It's certainly my priority, and as the uh, chairman of the Armed Services Committee in Congress for the last four years, uh, until the Democrats took control this last year. Mm -hmm. Of course, that's been my priority and my main focus. But it must be for the country because that's where we have young men and women in harm's way. And, and of course, that's a priority. Uh, making sure that we prevail in those two theaters. I would say secondly, probably a close second, is the porous uh, uh, borders of the United States. And, you know, as the... Uh, as the chairman of the Armed Services Committee and also as a guy who bordered Mexico with my congressional district for many years, I built the border fence in San Diego that works so well. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's really two fences, a double-layered fence with a Border Patrol road in between. And when I built that fence, uh, that was a number one smuggler's corridor in America where most of the illegal aliens and most of the narcotics that came into the country traveled. That's that thin strip of land between Tijuana, Mexico and San Diego, California. I built the double border fence, and we reduced the smuggling of people and drugs in our sector by more than 90 percent. So the fence works. And as a result of that, uh, I wrote the law that was signed by the president on October 26th of 2006 that extends the San Diego fence, the double fence, mm -hmm. 854 miles across the smuggler's routes of Arizona, New Mexico, and Texas. Now, I wrote that law, and I made it a mandatory construction project for the United States. Mm -hmm. So far, the administration has only built 5.15 miles of that 854 miles. That's the last time I reviewed it with Homeland Security. Mm -hmm. They've been very slow. And as president, I would finish that border fence, construct the entire 854 miles in six months. And I would do that by having construction teams in California, Arizona, New Mexico and Texas all working concurrently on building their portions of the border. But right now the border is on fire with illegal immigration and smuggling of narcotics. And uh, the Senate, as you know, watered down my provision in this last omnibus spending bill, making it not mandatory that the government build it and removing the mandate that it be a double fence, mm -hmm. keeping some of the fence language in the bill but watering it down to the point where it's not mandatory and where the deadlines don't have to be met. And what I put in for Arizona was that the entire state of Arizona, that is all the way to Douglas, Arizona, had to be double fenced by May 30th of 08. And I put that in for a couple of reasons. First, Arizona has, has massive uh, illegal immigration and smuggling of narcotics right now. Uh, but secondly, uh, you know, we've lost over 120 illegal aliens to heat stroke and dehydration in that desert during the hot season last year. So I mandated that the border fence be constructed before the next hot season. That would, that would do a couple of things. First, it would seal up the border, stop smuggling of people and drugs. Secondly, it would save a lot of lives. Uh, the administration uh, moved out at a snail's pace. They've done a few miles, five miles mm -hmm. on the Arizona border, leaving the rest of the 392-mile border unsecured. And as a result of that, uh, they're not going to make the deadline that I put in place. Mm -hmm. So I think that's the second most important issue. And uh, of all the candidates running, Democrat or Republican, I'm the only candidate who's actually built a border fence, actually done something about border enforcement. Mm -hmm. It seems like the buzzword in the campaign this year on, from both sides, Republicans and Democrats, is, is change. They want to yeah. make a big change. In, uh, do you, do you see that, or is that just the, the political ploy of the? Well, I think I think just throwing a bumper strip out there without a without any backup is uh, is fairly shallow, mm -hmm. and I've noticed that when uh, when some of the candidates are pressed on what the change is, they they have to that consultant stepped out for a minute, and they'll need him to come back before they can answer the question. Mm -hmm. um, I I know exactly what I stand for. Uh, which is uh, which is a strong national defense, and I've been chairman of the Armed Services Committee for the last four years, and I've been on that committee for 26 years. Mm -hmm. I'm the only guy running who's chaired a major security committee in Congress, Republican or Democrat, Senate or House. And uh, there's a couple of things that we have to do. We have to continue to support the war fighting theaters in Iraq and Afghanistan, make sure our people have the right equipment. 
as chairman, I put an additional $400 million worth of body armor, armored vehicles, and jammers to protect against roadside bombs for our troops in Iraq mm -hmm. and Afghanistan. I, I increased the size of the U.S. Marine Corps to 180,000. Uh, I've uh, uh, put in additional dollars for over the years for things like missile defense, uh, increasing the capability of our submarine force, and doing other things that, uh, that not only are focused on these warfighting theaters, but I think we have to look to the horizon. And the horizon includes the emergence of communist China as a new military superpower. Uh, China right now is out building us three to one in submarines. They're building the F-10 multi-role fighter. Uh, they're building the Su-27 MiG aircraft with the Russians in conjunction with Russia. They're building about 100 ballistic missiles a year, including a new road mobile missile that will have a nuclear tip and will be uh, capable of reaching American cities, and some of them will be targeted on American cities. So China, with its new prosperity and with its hundreds of billions of dollars that it's getting from the United States in trade dollars, is becoming a military superpower. And no one else in the campaign understands that or is focusing on that. I see that. I get, uh, I get a briefings and analysis on China on a weekly basis. And that's the long-term challenge to the United States because while the terrorists are a long-term challenge also, and we need to continue to, to fight that war uh, with extreme uh, 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 vigor and, uh, and energy, uh, they're not building three submarines a year. Mm -hmm. And they're not uh, deploying a new, a brand new ballistic missile uh, with, uh, with uh, mass destructive capability. Mm -hmm. uh, and they're not shooting satellites out of space. The Chinese are doing all those things. So uh, adjusting our, our defense capabilities to meet this new emergence of a military superpower in China uh, is, needs to be a priority of the next administration. That's something that I would do. Um, the other thing that I think people haven't focused on is this. We are losing the industrial base of this country. And that's, I don't know if you watched me in the initial debates at the Reagan Library, but I've, I've talked about that, uh, and I've actually done something about it. I, I offered the, the, the Hunter Ryan China Currency Act in the last Congress that got 178 co-sponsors that would put countervailing duties on Chinese products that are coming in uh, at a much lower uh, prices than American goods because China is cheating on trade. They're manipulating their currency by devaluating it by about 40 percent. That basically reduces a cost on all Chinese products by 40 percent because if you devalue your money and we're purchasing products in dollars, you essentially mark down all of your products and you undercut the American competition. As a result of that, since I, since I brought that up at the Reagan Library, at the beginning of last year, we've lost an additional approximately 200,000 manufacturing jobs. So we've now lost 1.8 million manufacturing jobs to China. And that is an important aspect, not only of our economic uh, uh, status, but also it, in the long run it will have an effect on our national security capability. Mm -hmm. and, and let me give you an example. A couple of years ago, when our guys started to get hurt by roadside bombs in Iraq, uh, as chairman of the Armed Services Committee, I sent our teams out from Washington to try to find a steel company left in this country that could still make high-grade armor steel plate to put on the sides of our Humvees to protect against roadside bombs. I could only find one company left that could do that. The rest had already left our shores. And I've gone down through the array of military systems that we make, and we're down to just one or two suppliers in many areas. And, and over the next five to ten years, we're going to lose the ability to manufacture some of our military goods. So the industrial base is moving to China because we're allowing them to cheat on trade. And as we sit here, and I've, this has been a part of my speeches and my, uh, my uh, uh, statements for the last year in this campaign, I've told my, my fellow Americans, each day, you have American companies sitting in rooms like this with their financial advisors who tell them that even if they make a good product here in the United States and they have a good workforce and they have uh, highly uh, uh, capable equipment, for tax and tariff reasons, they, they are being told they should move their production to China, produce their sell back into the United States. And since I've been saying that, 200,000 jobs worth of those 
companies have in fact moved uh, because they they can't uh, produce a product. In some cases, the 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 Chinese price on on products is actually below the cost of materials alone for the American manufacturer. Now that's that uh, that poses a major challenge to our economic prosperity, uh, but also to our long-range security interests. So I think that's an important issue for our country. And as president, I would put countervailing duties. My, my bill, the Hunter Ryan bill, puts countervailing duties on Chinese products to bring their costs up to the, to the level that they would be at if they weren't manipulating their currency. Uh -huh. And everybody agrees they're manipulating the currency. Ben Bernanke, head of the Federal Reserve Board, you know, went to China mm -hmm. and wrote a speech in which he said this is a subsidy. It's absolutely a subsidy from the state. They're basically subsidizing every sale that their that their uh, producers make, and uh, that's one reason they're undercutting our prices, and one reason we're losing this trade war. This year, our trade deficit was 800 billion dollars. So while the other guys debated the 161 billion dollar budget deficit, I talked about the 800 billion dollar trade deficit. Well, now I know they're they're leaving you out of some of the debates. They're, the the polls aren't particularly in your favor, but you're, you're going along. And oh, listen, I, yeah, I'm, I think that, that my issues, strong national defense, uh, having an enforceable border, including building that border fence, and bringing back and preserving the industrial base of this country are compelling issues. I think they're the best issues. And incidentally, I picked up Governor Romney's brochure the other day, and it's got him leaning against my border fence. We're standing at it. I guess he went down to San Diego to my district for a photo op, and he's talking about how we have to build the border fence. So some of this is starting to sink in. Uh -huh. And I saw uh, Mr. Giuliani's commercials, and he had said we've got to build the fence. Uh, and, uh, and, so, and I saw in Michigan, uh, John McCain was talking about making sure the Chinese play by the rules. Mm -hmm. You know, I've been talking about the fact that they're cheating for the last uh, 10 debates or so. Uh, so some of this stuff is starting to take with the other candidates. That means mm -hmm. with respect to the issues, we are driving the issues. I think that's an important uh, and a valuable uh, uh, contribution to this national competition that we call the race for the presidency. Mm -hmm. And I think I've still got some daylight. Uh, and the reason I think there's a chance for me to win, even though I have no money, uh, is the fact that nobody has dominated this race, that this thing is still wide open. So I've got the issues, and uh, I don't have the $100 million or so that uh, Governor Romney spent so far. On the other hand, uh, I think I've got the experience, and I think the best credentials, uh, to be the President of the United States. Is, is there a, a point where you have to... Um start making a good showing in some of these to, to well, justify the, staying in the race? Well, the best one we've done so far, we came in third in Wyoming. Uh -huh. uh, that's that's the best showing I've done, uh, we've made so far. I think we got a great chance of doing well here in Nevada. Uh -huh. And uh, and so we're out here working. Chuck Yeager came in for me here, as you know, made a, several appearances for me. We've, we've done teletown meetings uh, here in Nevada, and he's going to be coming in uh, uh, they just called up uh, on uh, Friday and Saturday. He's available to come back over from California. So uh, he's uh, been helping us a lot. We've got my whole family's out here. My son, Duncan, just came back from Afghanistan. He's done now three tours as a U.S. Marine. Mm -hmm. And uh, and he's uh, he just got he got out of the Marines December 7th, and he was uh, campaigning December 8th. So he and Sam are coming up from California. They're going to be helping out. He's going to be trying to bring the Marines out to help old dad. Uh -huh. <laughs> he thinks he thinks he's a better speaker than the old man, and he probably is. So, uh, and, and let me tell he's you, running we for your seat is that correct? Yeah, he's yeah. running for my seat. I dragged him away from his own race to come help the old man. You know, it's tough to do. Uh, but uh, you know, this is a wonderful campaign, and, and uh, Lynn and I really like Nevada. Uh, we were married in Nevada, coming back, coming down from uh, from Idaho. I came back from Vietnam. I had a had a farm in Idaho. Did a lot of hunting in uh, northern Nevada, and uh, and uh, they got a lot of friends. My my partner uh, uh, Bob Montrose had a had a uh, uh, had a hotel and a restaurant operation in Mountain City, Nevada, mm -hmm. and uh, and so we feel a kinship. Plus, we're Westerners, uh, you know, and I I like uh, I like the idea of letting Western states lead the policy with respect to to the use of their uh, of their federal uh, lands and and not have. Uh, uh, not have folks in Washington who think that their IQ increased when they crossed the Mississippi River uh, running those policies. I want to have what Ronald Reagan had. You know, I came in in 1980 with Reagan. Mm -hmm. I was I'd come out of gotten out of the uh, 
of the Army. I was coming back from Vietnam, and I, I had a storefront law office in the barrio in San Diego, in the waterfront there. And Reagan, when Reagan came in, I came in with Reagan, and uh, I was one of his 53 Republican freshmen. Mm -hmm. He had a policy with respect to Western lands. He said he called all of his guys in, and he said, we're going to have the good neighbor policy. And that means if you've got a town in Nevada that needs extra land for a school, we give it to them. We don't quibble about it. And, and we had that, as you may recall, we had a good neighbor policy during the Reagan administration with federal lands. And it wasn't a dictatorial policy. I want to have a good neighbor policy with, uh, with all of our Western states. And I am a Westerner. 